Magdalene's Blog 17 The wedding came and went in a grand manner, close to winter solstice, following the Zoroastrian customs which Casper's family adhered to. I miss Sarita so much, though there were only a very few weeks to go to the acceptance ceremonies, it seemed to be an eternity without her. She followed her path with such a simple faith that it was hard to believe that she really meant what she said, but I'm sure that she did. To me she was a little golden Aphrodite, goddess of love, and I was not surprised that Casper had fallen for her so completely. Well, he had better appreciate what a jewel he had gained, and to be fair to him, he seemed to be a man but might. I sighed again and again inside. Where to for me now? My mind turned to the goddess herself. I needed to comprehend what it meant to follow her path, rather than just blindly blundering on. What had I really understood about her, them? The questions continued to circulate in my head. Astarte must be the greatest, embracing motherhood as well as all other aspects of womanhood, queen of heaven, lover, and even warrior. Surely this is why the temple is dedicated to her. Aphrodite is, and yet isn't the same. All-consuming is her pursuit of love and beauty, and in this alone she is perhaps the greatest force. Certainly she seems to be the goddess most widely honoured in this modern world. The goddess Isis is another that the high priestess Bilal seems to esteem so highly, but the reasons for this are still a bit secret and not much shared with us neophytes. Then of course there is Hecate, peerless in her own right. No god cared to contend her greatness, yet the one most often overlooked. None escaped her power, curled hidden in the underworld, as is the crossroads of life and death itself. The winter, with Adonis in the underworld, seemed to belong most particularly to Hecate, and with that thought I found myself wandering towards the herbal gardens, where the eldest priestesses stayed, that understood so much of goddess law. Maybe they could help me, though I didn't quite know what with. It was the middle of the afternoon, and though the day wasn't very hot, the sun was bright and most of the temple was still enjoying a lull in the day's activities. Across the outer courtyard, trying to think what question I might ask of the ancient sisters. Perhaps about the right of acceptance. Except we pretty much knew now what to expect. After a day of preparations, Astarte Bilal would take the exploration of our bodies into its most intimate areas, and herself play the part of Adonis by opening our passage to the pool of Artemis, the tool of polished marble. There would be pleasure because the priestesses were expert in bringing this about, and pain, because our bodies were as yet untried. So much we had found out. Then again I could ask about the great secret, the potion that is called Hecate's knife. Only these ancients knew its whole, apart from the high priestess herself, and perhaps her closest aides. Yet though we didn't know its formulation, we already understood its purpose, for nothing could be kept completely secret in the temple. The potion is what the priestesses took that stopped them from getting pregnant, and Belle will prepare it for each of us.